Um, so now, uh, again, I want to put a compressor on there because I can tell that this drummer needs a little bit of help evening it out. Um, so I like this, this stereo compressor. I'm just kind of, you can tweak this thing forever, um, but the main controls are this threshold, um, the attack and release. Um, and the ratio. So this is how much it turns it down. I'm going to be a little more extreme on this than the kick drum. I'm going to go to 3 to 1. We'll see what that sounds like. Now I'm going to, now I'm going to pull this uh, compressor threshold until it starts to clip. You'll see it right here in the game reduction. Okay, so now it's compressing just about every hit, so I know that they're all going to be close to even. Okay, so that's working for me. And the, the only other thing is now with this uh, snare drum, I want to give it its own reverb, um, separate kind of from the rest of the drums. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, reverb and we're just gonna go all the way with the space designer and we can just kinda choose the room that we want here uh, so let's see we'll go with uh, medium spaces and we'll do do a cool plate reverb uh, I actually like vocal plates sometimes on snare drums we'll try this golden vocal um, and now you'll hear when we since this is an auxiliary it sets it up with no dry signal so all we're going to get is the wet signal so we need to turn that dry signal back up and we're going to use this wet signal as our uh, reverb amount so that just puts it in its place uh, it gives it some space so again, we're not going to worry about uh, toms, but overheads, a lot of times I like to put just a mild compression on overheads, but I'm also going to EQ them. Uh, the problem with these overheads is we use kind of cheap mics, uh, and they're getting, they're not well isolated at all, and the room didn't sound that great, so I'm actually going to roll off uh, a lot of the low end on them. So they're just going to kind of be sprightly. And I'm also going to pull up some of the very top highs just to give them a little bit of extra oomph up there. There, that sounded a little bit better to me. Um, but then I also like to compress these just just uh, a little bit. It kind of glues the kit together. Um, you don't want to get too extreme with it. I'll show you what it sounds like when it's extreme. your overheads will kind of take over so we're just gonna get uh, really basic so it just kind of uh, molds the kit together again I'm gonna go back here and restart this from the beginning Okay, so I'm liking that um, reverb, but I think it's a little bit too short. So I'm actually going to see. I'm actually going to go in and grab a little bit longer one. Let's go to a medium space and find a vocal plate. Or let's, let's try this drum plate. Yeah, so I like that one a little bit better. Uh, so now, um, this is kind of coming together. I, I like it um, so far. Uh, kick is a little bit loud, um, a little bit more overheads now that we've taken out some of that bottom end. So now we're left with this uh, just regular drum track. And, and this is pretty cool. Like We want to kind of put these drums into a room since we kind of pulled out that room mic. I think it's ugly. Uh, so, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to compress these all together so they all sound good together. Uh, we're just going to kind of glue them together just like we did with the overheads, but now we're going to let the uh, kick drum and the snare drum interact with everything. 
Um, so I'm actually going to just pull up a preset here for Tight Drums Class A, and let's see what this sounds like. That sounds pretty aggressive, but I like it. Um, the only problem is the overheads now are being brought up by that compressor, so we're going to drop them down a little bit. And way too much snare. Okay, so I'm, we're starting to kind of hear the problems because it's bringing stuff up. Maybe it's a little bit too extreme. Um, so I'm going to pick up the... the Threshold just a touch. Okay, so that sounded pretty good. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to put all those drums together in a room. So again, I'm going to use another space designer. And we're just going to choose a room. There's some pretty cool drum rooms here. Let's just go rooms. And then uh, I believe there's a drum room. Oh, it's actually in this small spaces, rooms, drum booth. We're going to go drum booth uh, four. Let's give that a try. And again, we need to dry, pull our dry signal up again. So all that does is kind of put them all in their own room. Um, so now that we're hearing that, I'm kind of hearing way too much attack on the kick drum. So I can go back in here. I'm going to pull that attack down. Um, oops. Let's see. I'm actually going to pull some out and see what it sounds like. Yeah, that sounds better to me. I might need to pull some of that back in when I start adding in the bass. But overall, um, And that, that reverb is just a little bit too much for me here. Okay, so there you have it. By, by no means is that exhaustive. You could go forever. Um, but a lot of people, they like to use like 15 plugins per track. Um, the only thing that I was probably going to use on the drums is again another EQ, EQ, a compressor, and actually a gate. So that the toms would only play through. Um, when they get hit and so we don't hear all the other sounds but um, in general this is how kind of my workflow with working with drums I would probably work with them for a little while longer and then once you bring in all the other instruments you're gonna tweak again but this gets us to the point where you can probably tweak from that um, master channel. Uh, hopefully you found that informative um, if you have any questions uh, just realize that this is not exhaustive this is it would normally take me five to ten times as long as that to uh, figure out the drum sounds for a project but this kind of gets you started um, and considering what the track sounded like when we started with uh, you could tell that if you start doing stuff like busing and being careful with uh, what plugins you're using uh, you can start to get good drum tracks and another key to this busing method if you look down here at my CPU it's not even touching uh, Whereas sometimes, like I recently recorded at a Pro Tools studio and they maxed out an entire HD3 session just on the drums and I was blown away uh, because they were just using so many plugins per channel. And there's really no need. It doesn't sound any better um, than you can use with four or five plugins. So um, go ahead and try that. Um, I'm actually going to find a way to put um, a section of these audio tracks up on my blog so you can just grab them and try this for yourself um, if you're practicing uh, so if I forget to do that leave a comment or something but I, I will surely uh, put these in a package up there so okay so there we have it that's the conclusion of the drum mixing videos I'm sure there's lots of questions uh, if you have them please go over to the blog um, down at the bottom of the screen and like I said I'm going to be posting up those uh, drum uh, audio track sometime in the next couple days so uh, stay tuned and uh, you can go grab those and you can have some drums to play around with if you don't have any so um, yep uh, enjoy that and have a good one